welcome to another video and today I'm reviewing The Last of Us 2. Very fair warning here, uh, it is impossible to review this game without spoiling it because there's a specific event that happens at the beginning of the game, there's a specific event that happens in the middle of this game, and then obviously the ending. Uh, and because of these things, I opted to just do a completely spoiler-filled review. I kind of waited a little bit of time here to make this, so people will have had time to play the game. Uh, but fair warning, if you do not want any spoilers, I would recommend not watching this video, simply because I'm going to spoil a lot of aspects of the story in this video review. And I don't feel there's an easy way to dance around why I like and dislike this game. Uh, without talking about the story because that's the most important aspect of any Naughty Dog game, especially The Last of Us. So anyways, now that you have that warning, let's go ahead and dive into my full review of The Last of Us Part 2. Tommy did this. This? No way. That was definitely him. He's one of the ones that killed Joel. There's another one over here. I don't recognize him. He was using them against each other. How? Joel told me about this. You ask this guy a question, but you don't make him say it. You make him write it down. And then you ask this guy, and if the facts match, you're telling the truth. If not... You fuck him up? So I'm going to start this review off by saying that I am of the mindset that I never thought that I wanted a sequel to The Last of Us. Uh, when it was announced back in 2015, I kind of went, hmm, I guess. And now that I've played through the entirety of this massive and honestly just a tad too long game, I am going to continue having that notion of I don't think they needed to make a Last of Us Part 2. And it's unfortunate because... This game is incredibly well made. It's a technical masterpiece, but I think in terms of the storytelling of this game, it falls short. And it's unfortunate to say that. I know a lot of production went into that. I mean, they haven't made a new Last of Us game in seven years. This is a team who hasn't done anything since Uncharted 4. I think a B team worked on Lost Legacy, which, you know, you can correct me in the comments if I'm wrong about that. But unfortunately, and it, I, I hate to say this, but... And we'll get into the reasons why, but I think the story for me fell very short of what I was expecting out of a Last of Us sequel, and that's why I still maintain the notion of, I didn't need a sequel to The Last of Us. I thought that, well, that game had other problems, I thought the storytelling in that game was perfect, and it was a complete beginning, middle, end story that didn't need to go past that. And... They've done that here. Obviously, that game sold incredibly well. They put out a remaster on PS4, so you always knew they were going to probably make a sequel. And it seems like after playing this game, they're going to make this into a trilogy. At least that's my opinion. And I mean, I guess that's fine, but we might as well dive into the reasons why I dislike uh, some of the aspects of the story of this game. The story picks up a couple years after the events of the original game. Uh, as you guys know, at the end of the original game, when Joel delivered Ellie to the Fireflies, he couldn't live with the decision of letting the Fireflies kill her to harvest a cure for the virus from her. So he ended up killing those doctors and taking her back. And it's something you always knew, hey, if they're going to make a sequel, they're going to have to directly deal with this decision. 
Uh, it was a decision in that game that I thought was an incredible ending to that game because it divided uh, the player base of that game. Some people thought that Joel made the correct decision. Other people thought that Joel made a bad decision. And so they have to do something with that here. The catalyst for why Ellie is doing what she's doing in The Last of Us 2 is because Joel is killed in the beginning of this game. This happens within the first 90 minutes of the game. It was pretty much alluded to in all the trailers, except they never actually showed the act of it happening. But you have to think, why else? What other reason would she have to go on this massive killing spree and revenge story uh, than Joel being killed. So you kind of knew going into this game that that was going to be the catalyst to bring her to uh, the entirety of the story. However, what a lot of players do not know going into this game, and I feel like a game hasn't done something this crazy since uh, maybe Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty, is you don't play as Ellie throughout the entire story of Last of Us 2. You play as her for, I'd say, about 12 hours of the game which the game itself is about a, it took me a little about 21 hours, I believe, was my save file time when I finished it. And this was me doing a lot of uh, collectibles, a lot of picking things up and whatnot. So about halfway through the story of this game, you will take over as another character. But what's the twist of this game here is that the character that kills Joel is the person you play as through the later half of this game. And then towards the end, your perspective eventually switches back to Ellie. And then they kind of do a little switch off between these two characters. So the other character in this game you play as, you've seen her in the trailer. Her name is Abby. Uh, she has ridiculous Brock Lesnar arms. Uh, she's a really cool and interesting character. But the problem with a story like this is much like Halo 5, much like Metal Gear Solid, games that have always done something like this in a story to change perspective and bring things into a different character never work. You know, Metal Gear Solid 2, they made you play as Raiden for the entire game, and people hated that character until they kind of retconned him and turned him into a half-ninja cyborg thing in Metal Gear Solid 4. And on the flip side of that, Halo 5, you know, you play 80% of that game as a character that everybody hates, Agent Locke, who's just not even an interesting character. So and to see another game kind of try to do this, to try and change up the norm, I just feel like it doesn't work here. And it's not even the sense that you change to this perspective, but it's through the storytelling of the character of Abby where the game really started to kind of fall apart for me. So, I mean, the gist of The Last of Us 2 is it's a revenge story, but it's also a story about letting go of your hatred. And that's fine and all, but at the end of the game, I kind of just had a, what was the point of that uh, feeling for the story? And a lot of it has to do with how things are carried out throughout the story of this game. One major complaint I will have with this game, it, the game is incredibly brutally violent. It's one of the most brutal games I've ever played. I don't have a problem with the violence in this game, except... Uh, for whatever reason, Naughty Dog decided to put attack dogs in this game. And normally this is the kind of thing that doesn't bother me in a video game, but here, the act of killing dogs in this game is horrific. It's, it's honestly not acceptable. Uh, and I feel like this entire story could have been made and told without having guard dogs. I do think that the stealth idea behind it is cool. I think the fact that they can track your scent, I think that's all really cool and interesting. But the one and only time I had to machete a dog, it was horrific and it's not something I would ever want to do in a video game. So I don't think that that's something that had any business being in this game. And I understand it's a brutal, it's a harsh game, it's a harsh environment, but I didn't think that that was acceptable. And I think that going forward, that's not something I would like to see in a part three of The Last of Us or in any video game, if we're being honest. And I know that's kind of a crazy thing to be negative on in this game, but I just didn't like that. It didn't sit well with me throughout the entire game. The, the game actually even tries to make up for this later on by having you pet a variety of different dogs and play fetch with them, but it's not earned. Like, after I've killed, you know, 20 dogs, and then now you have me playing as a different character, petting and playing fetch with a different dog a couple times. It's just, it's it felt like they had to shove that in and go, oh yeah, sorry we did that. And that just felt incredibly lackluster to me. In terms of the story, uh, basically the character of Abby is the daughter of the doctor that Joel kills uh, at the end of The Last of Us to stop Ellie, uh, you know, basically from them harvesting a cure from Ellie because that would have killed her. 
Uh, the character of Abby is actually really interesting in her own right, but I just didn't care. Part of the reason why I didn't care is uh, before you lead up to the point where you play as Abby, they show what happens to the other friends in her group and they're all killed. So I have a problem caring about these new characters you're introducing when I know what the outcome of them is going to be ahead of time. And I thought that was poor storytelling. It just didn't fit for me. It, di it didn't work for me. Playing as Abby is fine. The problem I have with her story arc is she's very, you know, set in her ways working for the Washington Liberation Front, and that's fine. But there's a point in the game where she rescues two of these characters from this uh, religious zealot group in the game that I wish they would have explored more of, but they don't. And then she has a change of heart. She suddenly just has a change of heart. Like, you know, all her life she's known that this religious zealot group is bad, but she's going to save these two people and turn against everything she knows and then she just starts killing these other people that sh that have trained her and stuff in this, you know, Federation group. And I just had a hard time grasping that in this story because it just didn't make sense. So I was very disappointed in that aspect of the story. And even how the game wraps up at the end, the, the story of this game at the very end of it is basically your typical, uh, you know what, I hated you this whole time, but I'm not going to do this and I need to learn to let go of my hatred. And it just overall the story like that's that's what I have to hammer home with The Last of Us 2. The story is incredibly disappointing. At least I thought. I know other people are going to be hepped on it. It's 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 not the worst story I've ever seen in a game, but it's very disappointing. At least in my opinion. I know other people are out there praising it. Masterpiece. You know you've seen ten out of ten reviews everywhere. It's not a ten out of ten game. All right. So we've talked about story. We've talked about some of the other issues I have with this game. Let's talk about the good aspects of the game. I think the game plays fantastic. I think Naughty Dog has improved upon the improvements they made in the Uncharted series, especially with Uncharted 4. I think they've carried a lot of the improvements over here. I will also say this game has some of the best accessibility options I've ever seen in a video game, uh, especially like high contrast mode. All this stuff is fantastic. You can tweak literally every aspect of the difficulty in this game. And that's really fantastic. I would like to see more games do this uh, in the future. And I think that's a great part of this game. Uh, another part of this game, I really like the combat. I really like uh, a lot of the stealth aspects of the game. Some of it gets a little iffy at times when people see you and you go, oh, they didn't see me, but now they actually did see me. That part of the game gets a little questionable. I also like upgrading the weapons and stuff in this game. If you're, you know, a gun enthusiast or something, you're probably going to have a fun time upgrading weapons in this game. One other thing I have to point out with, and one aspect I really like The Last of Us uh, Part 2 is they go against typical video game tropes that you'll see in a lot of this type of video game. Uh, specifically, I had one part in the game where I kind of got into this apartment. I was wandering around, I was scavenging for different parts, and I decided, oh, there's a workbench here. I'm going to use this workbench. And in the middle of just upgrading my gun, I start to hear somebody coming up behind me. And when they come up behind me, I'm just like, oh shit, you know, and I get out of it. There's three people in this apartment now and they're just attacking me. Typically, you know, video games have taught us when this kind of stuff can't happen when you're in that type of menu. I thought that was something really cool Naughty Dog did and it made, it put me on edge for the rest of the game and it never happened again. And I think that was the coolest part of it is I thought when it first happened, I got out of it. I, I thought, oh man, I've seen the trick. I'm going to see that a million times now. I never saw that happen again. And I have to give Naughty Dog credit for that because I thought that was a really cool thing to put into this game. Uh, the game looks absolutely gorgeous most of the time. Uh, it's it's amazing this game is running on a PS4. I played it on the PS4 Pro, and it just runs incredible. It looks incredible. It's one of the best looking games for the PlayStation, and it really shows. They used every ounce they could out of this machine to pump this game out. Um, and it, it plays really well. It looks really well. If I have one other complaint, I'd say it's too long. Uh, which I know is a ridiculous thing to say about a single player game, but I feel like you could have cut three to four hours out of this story And I think that would have been the perfect length. This game took me about 22 hours to complete I feel like it should have taken me 18. So I think there was some filler in there I think the third act of this game specifically when you start really switching back and forth between Ellie and Abby is very slapdash and very sloppy I think that could have been a lot better. So overall, guys, for Last of Us Part 2, I enjoyed my time with it. I think it's a very well-made video game. I think the story fell short for me, and I think 
when I go into a Naughty Dog game, that's the part of the game I'm most interested in is the story. For that to fall short for me, I have to knock this game down a little bit. I'm giving it a B minus. I don't think it's a perfect game. Uh, I don't agree with the 10 out of 10 reviews that are out there, but I also am not agreeing with these, you know, two and three out of tens. I see a lot of user reviews given this game. I didn't outright hate the game. I don't outright hate the story. I just found a lot of aspects of the story kind of questionable and there's a lot of plot holes in it. So B minus is what I'm giving the last of us part two. Let me know in the comments below if you enjoyed the last of us part two, as always, remember to like share and subscribe to the channel. And as always until next time.